y'all. Today we got an artist up and coming straight out of Hayward, California, the yes, stack. Right. Hemp Hero, thank you for sliding through, bro. I really appreciate it coming through the Noble Cinema Studios for this interview. How you feeling, bro? Thank you for having me, bro. Shit lit. I'm I'm used to be here for real. All right. It's all good. Me and you kind of connected. I don't know how long ago it was maybe six to eight months ago, and I yeah. hit you up about the show, and you came through and murdered that shit. So I appreciate that too. Thank you, bro. It was crazy too, cause like I remember when we first connected on Instagram. I told I told my partners I go like I was excited, bro. I'm excited to just have this opportunity and like all the shit that's going on in my life. So I told my partners, and then like a couple months later, I was like, yeah, remember when I said with you? I'm doing a show with him now. I was like, that's you fine. feel me? Like, I was like that's lit, bro. Yeah, like, well, I can tell too. Like you're you're a real humble cat, and that's what I appreciate because you know there's a lot of energy in this world that's bad, and I can tell you got that energy to like you know do something with yourself and really get get to where you need to be because. I mean, you could be an asshole your whole life and still make it, but I feel like it's something to be said about people who are good people that that make it. So I, I definitely want the best for you, too. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, let's start from the beginning. So let's let people know, where are you from? I'm from Hayward, California, the north to be exact. But I'm born and raised in Hayward. Like, my birth certificate say Hayward. So you feel me? Like, yeah. I don't really know nowhere else like that. I yep. spent a little time in, like, San Leandro, like, a little bit, like, uh, for living situations. But other than that, no, it's always been Hayward, like, other than that. So I, I got a couple of homies that are from Hayward, but, like, there's a lot of, like, blurred lines between San Leandro and, like, San Lorenzo. You Did you grow up feeling that weird? Like, it was, like, some people would be repping Hayward in San Lorenzo or be from San Lorenzo repping Hayward. Did you ever see that? I never personally experienced that at all because like, I don't know, just the people I was surrounded with was like actually from Hayward. But mm -hmm. have I heard of things like that? Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without a doubt. Like I for sure have heard like, like, you know, just people saying they're from so-and-so and they're not actually being from that area. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, but San Leandro and San Lorenzo though, you got to understand it's like, they right next to each other like bro and it's so weird like their borders are hella weird so it, it don't make, make sense when you're like driving through it you're like wait fuck where am i right now but uh which is closer to oakland san lorenzo or hayward oh hayward i would yeah hayward's a city away so you go hayward san leandro Oakland. because i where is uh east 14th it goes in between oakland and, and san leandro? yeah that that becomes that east 14th that turns into you feel me like goes into oakland and then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it goes into international. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you feel me? Gotcha. But uh, East 14th, that starts right at right at the end of Hayward. You'll see a little woo a little bridge called uh, it says Cherryland on it, and then right as you not Cherryland, I'm sorry, it says uh, Ashland. You'll mm. see the Ashland Bridge, and you go under that, and then boom, you're in San Leandro. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I had yeah. a best friend. Yeah, that and that's Hayward. Ewan Fo. All that is Ewan Fo. Before that is Mission. Okay. That's Hayward still. He was from. South Hayward, I believe. You might hate me for this, but I don't know. Um, what was it like for you growing up in Hayward? I mean, Hayward's, Hayward's an interesting place, bro. You got a lot of everything, bro. It's the heart of the Bay, and some people are going to hate me when I say that, but it's true, though. It's literally, like, in the middle of everything. And if you look at their, like, their motto, Hayward's little motto of the city is, like, the heart of the Bay. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, that's their shit. Like, it's actually, like, you feel me? Like, we are the heart of the Bay. So, uh... It's got everything, bro. So it's like, you got like, you got to kind of like, don't get me wrong. You can have like a good, you, you just, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? You got to be able to adapt. That's all. Like, bro, because you got everything there. So depending on who you hang out with is what you go get into type shit. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a shitty little city. There ain't much to do. But like, if you know the right people, there's something to do. Does that make sense? Like, yep. it's so definitely. So you, were you, when you were coming up in Hayward, like, what were you interested in were you more into school were you into the streets like how did that work out um i was i was definitely like a cool kid like you feel me just a normal kid i would say more up until like middle school and then you know i was kind of like a like a skater kid and then before that, i was like i had my, my little like rocker phase like I, I love rock music till to this day like don't get me wrong don't get a twist i love all music that shit is fire uh but like i got into skateboarding and then you know you start going outside a little more and like you know, you start seeing certain things and certain events in your life happen that you can't really control and you lose certain people. That shit kind of grows and shapes you as, as a man, like as a person, you feel me? Like man or woman, like, you know, going through certain things is going to shape you. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's a, I, I was just into like, 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain that. Like, I, I don't want to say too much. I was, I, I was, I was a cool kid, but I was just like, I was getting, getting to it. I had decent grades, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, I graduated high school. You feel me? Like, um, what was like? What was your musical influences coming up? Were you interested in like Bay Area music, or were you more like into other things outside of the Bay? I think I don't. I think I didn't get into like Bay Area type music until I got older. Like I said, I was like my my family got a lot in it, bro. Like I got a Portuguese grandpa. I got like a black auntie. Like you feel me? Like I was influenced by like a lot of different things. But before I got into Bay culture, like I don't even. I, like don't get me wrong, like my my mom a young mom, but like I don't really think she was a part of the hyphy movement like that. Besides like the most basic of like Matt Gray and stuff. You know Where's what I'm mom's from? Mom's uh she from Cali, like okay. uh. She grew up in, I want to say like Fremont, like type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She went. She grew up in Fremont. Uh, that sounds terrible. I don't know that, but <laughs> no, yeah. She grew up in Fremont, from what I remember her telling me. Um, but yeah, uh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> How about pops? Uh, I haven't seen that since I was like twelve, okay. thirteen. Got you. We, so uh, not too much of an influence. Not on, not on musically. It's, it's funny because it's like, you know, you, I catch myself doing certain things and being into certain things like movies. Movies is a big part of like where he played a role when I was mm. younger. I used to see him when I was younger, but we had like a little falling out, I guess, but it was some, some dumb shit. But like, you feel me? It is what it is. Definitely. And uh, yeah, like Pops didn't really play that much of an influence other than like movies. I would say movies is like the only influence he played. I love movies because of him. Like we used to, that was our biggest thing together. We used to watch a bunch of movies. Movies I should not have been watching as a kid. I can but, relate to that. What yeah, type of type movies shit. did you grow up? What are like some of your favorites from back in the day? Oh, bro. My favorite movie of all time, Harlem Nights with Eddie Murphy, bro. So good. So underrated, bro. If y'all never seen that, go watch Harlem Nights, bro. It's fucking hilarious. I watched it a thousand times. Put all my friends onto it. Uh, other than that, you know, it's the, the classics like The Godfather. I've seen all three plus three make uh, fucking Goodfellas. Were you in the Scarface? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for surely. Uh, I think it was funny. I didn't watch that until a little bit older, actually, because like my dad, for some reason, that was one of the few movies that like we watched. But I don't remember us watching it over. Like we watched Goodfellas a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there was a couple of movies we watched a lot. I don't feel like we watched Scarface a lot. And I think it was because it had a lot of coke in it. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, like, or, and then there was more normal shit, like Rush Hour, Good Trouble in Little, Big Trouble in Little China, you know, good shit like that. Definitely. Um, so as far as, all right, let's, so let's go into this a little bit, because I'm very curious about this. What is the story behind your name, Hemp Hero? <laughs> um, so it started as like, I just wanted a, a good Instagram handle. You feel me? And then um, I got into high school and I started doing certain things and people started needing me for certain things. And uh, I guess the name kind of got bigger than me. Like, like it, it kind of stuck. Like people would just, and mind you, like, it's kind of funny to me when people call me hemp hero, like, like, like in normal conversation, just call me hemp bro. This is hemp. Like, you feel me? Like, in normal combo, it's just hemp. But, uh, yeah, so, like, I started doing certain things and people needed me. And so people would be like, oh, if you need this and that, go to uh, this Instagram. Go to Hemp Hero. Like, you feel me? Like, go see this Instagram. And so my Instagram kind of got bigger than So you me. would be people's hero, basically, with the hemp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, type shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it kind of just stuck. Like, I don't know. Like, I didn't, when, I, when I was picking a rap name, I didn't want something basic. And, like, I already had the name. So I was like, why not use it again? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I, I think like, it's a creative name. I don't know why it kind of reminds me of like some anime shit. I like love it just anime. reminds me of like, like, I don't know. Do you just, watch anime? I don't. Oh, you I don't? used to oh. when I was young. I was big into like that, you know, the like um shit. What was the Cartoon Network one? They used to play all the good shit like they got Dragon like Ball Z. Samurai Jack, Dragon Samurai Ball Z. Samurai Jack, yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wish that I was more into it. I guess it. technically does Powerpuff Girls count? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's gotta be. Like, is that anime? I don't for know. Sure. Yeah, type shit. But but nah, but I mean, yeah, I feel like the anime game is is dope. I wish I was more like into it, but yeah. I love How about anime. you? I love anime. Like, don't even I don't watch it as much anymore, but like I've seen like all of Death Note and like so I've started watching One Piece again because everybody start watching One Piece. And I swear to God, if I get if I get it spoiled for me what the One Piece is before I get to the ending, I'm gonna be so upset. 
But, don't look uh, at the comments in this video. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, well, I don't think it, it's going to come out soon, though. They just announced, like, this is the ending. Like, they're closing the arc with the last little filming for the manga. So it's going to be the ending soon. So people are going to know. And and bro, bro, that makes makes it. He already said he was like, bro, it's not it's not something stupid. Like it's actually an object. So mm. I'm curious to see what it is. Like is it a king? Is it a crown? I don't know. Yeah. So I feel like nowadays too, it's it's dope that the the rap game can be a little more. And this sounds like fucked up, but nerdy in the sense of like people can open their minds to more cool shit. I feel like like I get so tired of just the same old shit and like the influences you see, especially like artistically. Is like it, it makes me happy to see like especially like cartoons anime style like you see a lot of people doing like a lot of 3d type shit now i love those yeah and like it's cool to see that and like yeah and i feel like i feel like also too with your music like when i watch a hemp hero music video like you don't just do i mean you know you do the, the regular hood shit every now and again but like the one that you did gotcha. i can't remember the exact song right now but you were at the tea garden with the mic hanging. Oh, Lil Dance. Yeah. Lil Dance. I love and like, that that's a place that I like. So my thing is I like uh, sarcastic shit, but also ironic stuff. Like when somebody does something that's so out of the rhythm of like a regular. Because, you know, when you're rapping, I feel, and we'll get into it a little bit more, but you, you <coughs> do talk about like some gangster shit sometimes. You know what I mean? And like to I mean, see, yeah. to see both sides of it kind of operate in that way is tight to me. And I think that's where I'm like drawn to your music a lot too. And just like your, you. your visuals, like, but we'll get into that a little more. No, um, thank you for sure. I think I'm just so me. <laughs> you speak a lot about drugs in your music. Like what, what, when did you start experimenting with them? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was experimenting from a young age. I ain't gonna lie. Like I said, I was outside early. Like when I started skating, like you feel me, I just started being outside way more. And that was at like 12 ish. Like you feel me, that's when I started really like started smoking weed at 12. And then I don't remember what age it was. I don't remember how long it was after the fact. But I think after weed, I think it was like pills. And you feel me, like, and then after that, it was like shrooms. But I wasn't a stupid kid though. Like I would do research on like, all, everything like you can ask me a lot of questions about like the chemicals and in them and stuff like that and I don't know it like you know what I'm saying like I wasn't a dumb kid I, I didn't like to go into things not knowing what it would do or what it was in the first place or how to tell a real one from a fake one or how to tell what's you feel me like I didn't yep. like that I didn't like to risk it well that's why a lot of people die these days they that's what I'm saying because they don't do their research or they abuse the shit out of real ones you feel me like you can abuse real uh, prescriptions, you feel me? That's right. a thing. You feel me? You have to do these things healthily. You have to take care of your body. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a lot of water. You feel me? Water is important. Shout out Nobi for the smart water. Thank you so much. <laughs> fucking, um, yeah, bro. Like, all of these things are important, bro. You can't just be a fucking, like, you can't be a dope fiend, bro. You gotta, like, really, like, take care of yourself and, like, be good to your body. Definitely. So, you definitely smoke a lot of weed. He says smoking that, a, a tobacco, you feel me? Like, it's okay. <laughs> besides, besides the weed, what are your favorite drugs? I love shrooms. I love shrooms. Those are my. Those are my. <laughs> um, Have you had any wild experiences off shrooms? Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, I've never had what they would call a bad trip. I've never had a bad trip. That shit is like, like bro, if you have a bad trip, you 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 let yourself go way too too deep into thought. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. Like, I don't know how to explain that. Like I've always just been able to like pull myself out of it. I've been close to having a bad trip. Been very very close, but it wasn't my fault. Somebody else is having a bad trip. And it was almost gonna fuck up my trip, but it didn't. And um, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna put him on blast. If he ever comes on interview with me, we could tell the story together. But we got but, room on the couch. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. Because it's like it is his story. Like it was like it was a bad trip for him, but it was like it was almost a bad trip for me. It wasn't bad though. I've never had a bad experience. I've done acid, done done basically like most of the drugs except for like meth, heroin, and crack. You know what I'm saying, like. Stay away from those. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I've done, I've done all the fun ones that you could think of. Though. I feel like crack is out though. Like everything else is in right now, but crack he is said out. Crack is, he said crack is out. These are this is not in no more. Shit, not cool no more. <laughs> this, will, I mean, but you see it though. It, I mean, if you really think about it, the way drugs come in and out, it's there's a certain reason. Like it, whether it be fashionable, like you know, lean was popping for hella long. Then all of a sudden, you hear about what perks. Then you hear about now it's Fent, like you know it's crazy. Can I say something? Yeah, of course. So going back to the anime combo, we had um, fucking 
I feel like all of these things were always popular, but like they didn't get they didn't get their recognition until people start rapping about them and doing music about them. But like I feel like people were always watching anime in the hood and like and like popping perks and sipping juice. It just wasn't like and become a fad mm. until people started rapping about it. You know well, what I'm saying? But like, I said that too, where it's like it wasn't it wasn't accepted. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. anime wasn't accepted. Like you couldn't be like running around like, bro, I'm watching. I'm watching One Punch. I'm you know, be like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? One Punch, One Punch Man is fire. That's just yeah. fire too. That's just funny. It's one of the few animes you should really watch in English because it's like a comedy. That's just funny. I'll be watching the, the subs with the with the app, actual Japanese voices. That should be crazy. Oh yeah. I'm they sure. be putting their all into it. it have like, you checked out like nowadays they have the AI generators where now you can take like say you take a hemp hero music video. And you can literally take that audio and it'll change it into Japanese for you. AI is scary, bro. Scary. AI is scary. I don't even know how to like. I tried to do it one time for uh, for like just figuring out how to do like my own little music video thing that I needed. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out for me, bro. I what were you trying to do? Like you were bro, trying to make the cartoon shit? Bro, I guess so. I don't, bro, the app confused me. I didn't get it. I think they just took my money. I think I I got the little little like I think it was like three dollars for like a, a subscription for a month. Uh-huh. And I just got my three dollars, bro. Yeah, I don't lie to you. I I didn't do nothing with that. <laughs> that's I, fucked, that's up. fucked up. Yeah, no, AI is definitely scary. I think it's more scary for people like in in my industry where it's like certain things are gonna start disappearing from my grasp. Like there's gonna be generators that are gonna make a whole music video. They're gonna literally like okay. there's gonna be a camera that's moving on its own. You know what I'm saying? Shit. That shit's scary. I could definitely see that for sure. That shit's scary. Um, so I already asked you the what's your wildest. I mean, you went into what your wildest trip story is, but um, <laughs> let's go into this too because I'm very fascinated as far as this goes. Um, <coughs> where does your NY drill influence come from? Because I've, I've, like I said, I did re- a lot of research on your stuff, and I see you going into a lot of drill. What would you call that? Like the type of music that is, is like drill music, right? Yeah, I would call that drill for sure. Uh, I would definitely, you know, what's crazy. I want to do it. I, I'm doing it while like I'm getting a starting off to my career. Cause you feel me? We're not, we're not the biggest yet. I'm trying to get bigger, and I just want people to be used to like all the songs. That's why you see me singing and like on some songs and doing drill on other songs. Cause like, bro, don't don't label me as one artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I want to do it all, bro. Like, I love music, bro. Like, music is what it is. I'm not just like a rapper in my opinion. Like, I love music, like so. Yeah, like drill is is a big influence, I guess. And so your your question was, what is my drill influence? No, so I would say like, where did that come into your life? Like, because you, it's not just that you make drill. It's not that you listen to drill music. Like, I listen, I see your music videos, and you're actually rapping on drill beats. Yeah, like a good fair amount. Yeah. right. I would say damn near like thirty five percent of your music right now. That was a good. Out. That was a good percentage. That was yeah. really. That was damn near spot on. I see on. it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, what makes because, all right, so if, for the people that don't know, we're in the Bay Area. Yeah, we and are. And we're not in New York. No, right? we're not. So we're in California. what makes a dude from Hayward or the Bay Area come out and go, today I'm going to make some drill shit, and I'm not just going to make one song to experiment. I'm going to make a ton. I want to, definitely for one, I wanted to do something that nobody else was doing out here because it's like, mm-hmm. why not? But for two, it's also like, bro, like, like, yeah, I guess I guess mainly why not, but it's like, bro, we've been listening to like Chief Key forever in the Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that's been a thing and that's drill at the end of the day. It's just it's a different type of drill. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, all that shit is drill music. We have our own drill music. It's just not like that. It's not it's not at all like that. You can call really all this shit just it's the subject matter type shit. But it's like Can I ask you this then real quick before we jump into that? What what makes a drill song a drill song? I would say two things. I would say, okay, so here, here's what makes a drill song, in my opinion, and y'all, y'all can correct me in the comments. I'm sure everybody's going to debate on this. This is a great topic, though. Yeah. In my opinion, I think it's the subject matter. Now, mainly, I think drill did start as like a, as a subgenre of rap in Chicago, though. Like, I, I will give it to them. You feel me? Like, they definitely played their part. Like, there's definitely like a, like a, like a, what's the, what's a template for a drill. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like there's different versions of this. So there's the Chicago type of drill, then there's New York drill, then them UK niggas even got UK drill over mm-hmm. there popping, and that's like a thing over there. You feel me overseas? So it's just like I wanted to do. I, like I said, I love the way it made me feel. I love the energy that it gives me. I love how like how I was able to like express myself through this music in that in that uh, medium, mm-hmm. and fucking 
yeah, I just I just kept doing it. Like after the first one, I was like, I like it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, I'm making music that I like. Yeah. Like it's not it's not for like you know I'm I'm grateful that everybody likes it too. But it's like at the end of the day, it's it's just shit that I like. It's, it makes me feel good. Like, so let's go into that a little deeper then, right? So you make music that you appreciate, right? And people other people like it. But like what what in music? like gets that going for you like is it the beat is it the lyrics is it like a vibe like what what makes what makes a good hemp hero song come out the way you want it to the vibe okay it's gotta be a vibe bro like all all think about all the greatest songs that you could think of in your head right now y'all too you feel me like think about the best songs y'all could think of right now they're probably the best to you because it's the vibe bro like it's just it makes you feel something and that's what makes a good song in general not just a hemp hero song but if you can mm -hmm. feel that in your heart you feel me your corazón that shit feels great bro so like any 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 vibe that i can catch like i'll take that right there like i can't you can't sit me down and force me to write music it's hard yeah it's, it's genuinely hard it's not easy and it's not easy it's easy to make some bullshit but it's hard to make something that i feel like is good and you got to be your best critic because like the shit costs money let's be real here so like you got to be your best critic is it worth putting out is it worth putting more time into you feel me you got to do it uh, what you feel like other people do for you, but do it for you the best way possible. You feel me? Be yeah. your best critic. You can be. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's the vibe. Okay, so now that you say corazón, let's go into this question because I think a lot of people want to know about this. And I see this in a lot of your comments on Instagram. What ethnicity are you? I'm Mexican, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm Mexican. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I see a lot of people wondering, like, is he from the Middle East? Is he Indian? Is he <laughs> I for this? Sure, I for sure got that a lot, especially when, like, I grow my facial hair out. But, uh, no, yeah, I'm Mexican, bro. I'm just from the day, though, so it's, like, a different type of Mexican. You feel me? I'm, like, a real Chicano. I don't speak a lick of Spanish, but... Uh, be out there in the lowriders and shit, or what? <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish, man. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what I'm doing this for. Hopefully, I'll get a lowrider film. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that was a question. And you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what we are, you know what I'm saying? But I think that's a good thing because doing these type of interviews, you know, people can learn more about who you are too. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you can make, it, so I'm, let me ask you this too, as far as the music goes, right? Because I listen to I listen to your stuff and I and I watch your videos and shit like that. And I know and I think something that drew me to you was a lot of the harmonizing aspect of what you do. Like one, I, I forget the exact song, you know, uh, somebody will say it in the comments maybe, but the one, oh. so that was the first one I think I heard of you, right? And the way, cause were you, when you made that song, were you singing the hook or were you making your own hook over that? Uh, that one specifically, that one, I, I just sang over the original hook. Okay. That's uh, that's Candy Rain. You yeah. Know? That's, that's uh, Soul For Real. Yeah. Um, shout but that's out. something you shout do a out. lot, though, too. Yeah, I love, I love, like I said, I love music, bro. So, like, the the older stuff, like, my grandma definitely, that's a good one, because you asked me what's a good music influence. My grandma played a lot of music influence. I used to love, mm. like, I still love that lady, but, like, we, we hung out a lot when I was a kid. Yeah. So, it was like, uh. My grandma, she played a lot of like, you know, so for real, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is her favorite. That is like to this day, like she will sing that with her heart. Um, and yeah, so like I, I love all types of music and I, I think uh, it's it's good to pay like homage, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and what's the word? What's the saying? If, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I can't really, what, what are you going to say that's better than so for real? You know what I'm saying? Like, goddamn. Shout them out, man. They they did their motherfucking thing on this. So it was like, yeah, I just I just did my best to go over that roof for me. So what is like when it comes down to like the harmonizing aspect? I don't think I can sing. Let's get that out the way okay. right now. I don't think I can at all. I think I suck at singing. <laughs> but I do my best. And uh I think that's what matters, man. I do my best. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I I, I do my, yeah, I literally, bro, I do my best, bro. I don't think I can sing at all. No, I'm, but it's I'm dope, though. Thank you, bro. Yeah. I try. Like, genuinely, it's just me trying, bro. <laughs> yeah, because, I like, me, a little bit about me, like, I used to make music a lot, and, like, 
I was in the era where nobody was singing, right? You got like Jada Kiss, you got like E40 in the Bay. Love Jada Kiss, love E40. Nobody was singing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I used to love like harmonizing hooks and shit like that. And yeah. I don't know how you are in the studio, but like I love like layering vocals and like making a hook that way. Do you do that when you're recording? Sometimes, yeah. Uh, shout out, shout out, Brock, man. She's so fire, bro. She, she'll, she's the ear that I don't have for real. So like, if I'm, if I'm the lyrics and stuff, she, she's the, she's the, she's the seasoning bro she's the one that makes everything salt and pepper you feel me every all that good extra shit feel me a little paprika in that motherfucker she she really makes it fire bro she'll tell me and you know sometimes we'll have little debates like if i don't agree with something she'll be like no just trust me and like you know we'll go back and forth on it but uh so she, your process in the studio you allow the engineer to guide you a little bit if they oh feel yeah like, well yeah. specifically because I, I like i said bro i love brock bro like i genuinely think like the relationship that we've been building like professionally is so fire bro like it's like like that's more than like my engineer. That's my friend now. You feel me? Like I fuck with Brock genuinely, and like I think she got like a great ear. I think she's talented, bro. So it's like you gotta, you gotta take your hat off and let let people you know do their thing. Like with, like when it comes from directing to you feel me to like to uh, engineering. You got you know you gotta like some other people take the wheel, bro. Sometimes you're not as good as you think you are. You know what I'm saying? Like like be humble, bro. Like and you know great ideas can come from anywhere. So on that note, as far as like music video wise, right? Because you have a good what? How many music videos you got online now? Like good ten? Thirteen to fourteen. Okay. Maybe fifteen, but definitely not sixteen. Okay. I think so. As far as your, <laughs> as far as your creative process for music videos, when you're working with a director, do you just allow them to do whatever they see fit, or are you part of the process? Okay, so so shout out shout out expensive, bro. My bro expensive, he's so fire too. Like uh at first, like my first couple of videos, I, I did my best to be a part of the creative process, but it was like I feel like I was only like heard some of the time, you know what I'm saying? And that did kind of like irritate me a little bit. But then you I mean start, working with other directors that weren't really like peeping the vision. Yeah, like uh, not not even not peeping the vision. They would see the vision, but they wouldn't listen to like some of the, like the notes that I had. And it would kind of be like, bro, like I get it. Like don't get me wrong. Like feel me, you're the director. It's like, bro, it is my video. I don't mean to say it like that. But it is like, bro, like can, can, that's facts, can, can you work with me a little bit, my boy? So like, uh, yeah, bro, I started working with expensive, bro. And dude, he's so goaded already. Like he he worked with like these these already. Like you feel me? He's worked with hella big names, and so it was crazy. Like working with him is like a whole different experience. But like like if I tell him like a note, he'll take it into consideration, and he'll tell me if he thinks it's fire or not. Like if he if he really don't think it would be good, like he'll tell me. You feel me? Like he got his own mind, but like at the same time though, like we get to work together a lot more, and he's hella chill. So I fuck with that too. Like you feel me? Like so shout out my boy expensive. Like yeah, he he plays a big part in the creative process, but. He also allows the artist to work in that too, and I fuck with that. Yeah, shout out expensive. I tapped in with him like like a month ago or something like that. Oh, where? Yeah, I was just telling him how I fucked with you and like I fucked with the videos that he was putting out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like the thing with the with music is like you have to work with somebody as far as the visual aspect because the visual now is more important than the song. Let's be real. Like they want to see they want to see who you are. And that sounds fucked up. I know for for an artist. I would say I would say it's just as important. I would okay. say it is just as okay. important though. Definitely just as important without a doubt. Because it's like people, yeah, exactly what you said. They want to yeah. see who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, and it, like, it separates you from you know what I'm saying because like okay, one of the newer ones that you did, um, the one where you had the screen mask on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that alone is gonna reach a, a a a group of people quick. Like if you just see. Some creepy all red room. And there's a dude with a fucking with a fitted cap and a scream mask. <laughs> You're gonna instantly yeah. be like, man, what the fuck is that? Yeah. So that's where I say like the visual aspect is very important, and that's why I was curious, like when it comes to your visual aspect of things, how involved you were. That was me. That was me okay. for sure. Like that was like that was my idea. It was a Halloween video. It was super unexpected too. I did not wake up that morning knowing that I was gonna do a music video. I, and shout out expensive again because I asked him super late minute, and my boy was like, you know what? I'm gonna be in the area. I go pull through beforehand before he shot this other video for some other bro. And I was like, all right for sure. So he pulled up, and uh, don't get me wrong, he 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 pulls up with the lights and shit, which is fire. And we do need the lighting because it's amazing. And he knows how to set it up. He's a great director. He's a great. He's a filmy, but like. Yeah, like I, I chose the area and like I do my best to pick areas that are interesting to look at because I feel like there's too many rap videos that are stagnant and like kind of all blend in with each other. So like I do my best to like kind of like 
try and switch it up a little bit and then give it a little bit of sprinkle. You know what I'm saying? Like a little bit of razzle dazzle. You feel me? Like, well, I tell artists this too is like, you don't necessarily have to focus on having every single second of your music video be the craziest visually. But if you can literally do some like one thing in that video that's different from other shit, like I said, the fucking screen mask with the with the new era fitted is crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's a good idea because it's not something that people just normally do. I mean, you know, people wear masks and shit, of course, but I just feel like that's 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 something to be said about just having certain things in it. Like you said, that sprinkle, if you can make it you too and make it something that represents you well, I think that's good. Yeah, I let him, yeah, go, shout out Ghostface. I fucking, <laughs> yeah. that, that was a fire. You feel me? I love the screen movies. Yeah, so let me ask you this too, just in the general aspect. What what do you feel like makes you different from other artists either in the, let's start with the Bay. What makes you different? What makes me different, bro? I think just mainly the fact that like I, can do different things and that I can branch out. And like, look, at the end of the day, if you don't like the drill shit, you ain't gotta listen to the drill shit. Go listen to one of my other songs. I guarantee you'll like one of them. You feel me? Like I can do a lot of different shit. And I think that's what makes me different, bro. Like I don't just sit in one type of style. Like you feel me? Like I'm gonna do what I had fun with that day. And if I feel like it was fun enough, I'm gonna keep going with it. And you feel me? Broccoli's gonna add her razzle dazzle and make it a whole song. And then you feel me, it just goes from there. Like, bro, I can do different things. I think that's what separates me from other Bay Area artists. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna do something a little different. Dope, and I see that too. I feel like, like I was saying, you know, focusing on the harmonizing aspect, but also just like doing a different, a different look. And I think that's something that that you know gets people people's attention with you too. Is like, like I was saying earlier about the ethnicity thing. Like people wonder, like, who is this guy? Like, where is he from? Like, what is you know what I mean? And I mean, yeah, that's fair for sure. I I just never looked at it like that. I guess because like, bro, like I said, I got a lot of different people in my family and like a lot of different people that I grew up around. And Hayward's a whole melting pot full of ethnicity. Definitely. So like, I didn't even look at race until other people started looking at race. Like, bro. I'm always like my auntie's black, my grandpa, my grandpa on my other side of the family black. Like, you feel me? Like I never looked at it like a, a crazy thing, and then yeah, I, I feel like other people would start to and like I'd hear it in like movies and stuff, and you know, like it's just it's a thing. You know, racism is a thing, but like in the Bay Area is different. Like it's just a way different vibe. It's a different culture. Yeah, it. well, also just too like face value wise, you know what I'm saying? Like I think that's what a lot of people are just like. The first thing. And that's where I say, like, the visual aspect Definitely. is so important. Yeah, the, yeah, for you sure. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. I, like I said, like, if you don't have something that's different, you're just going to, you're not going to stand out. I mean, it's point blank, period. You, you know got, what I mean? You got to present like, yourself well because, you know, first impressions are everything, bro. Yeah. Like, they really are. So, let me ask you this, too. So, looking through, you're on Thizzler a lot now. Are you, are you like, signed at all or is it just... I'm in, I'm in their little prospect program. I'm not signed at Thizzler, though, bro. I just, we just started. <laughs> yeah, that's fire, though. Congrats but, on that, uh, too. Because I see... Oh, for sure. I see you growing and then I seen that where, like, I've been seeing them paying a lot more attention to you and I think that's that something too, you deserve. That'd be surprising to me. I'd be like, whoa. We'd be making, like, the, the, the monthly monthly listing. Like, mm -hmm. like, that's my second time doing that. And then, like, every time... Congrats on that. Almost, thank you, bro. That was, that was shit. It was surprising. I didn't even think that song was gonna do it, but it did. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. But uh, every time, bro, every time I would get posted at this, I think there's only been like twice or maybe once, once or twice that I didn't make like the top five of the week, and that'd be surprising me, bro. I'd be grateful. I'd be like, "Wow, all right." Like you know what I'm saying? Like people do start to take notice. I didn't have some big names, and I'm not gonna shout them out because I feel like that's corny. But I didn't have some big names tap in with me and be like, "Hey, I like your shit." Keep going. Fire. That's fire. Like like them niggas said I could rap. Like nobody could tell me shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, let me let me go a little deeper on that. So if you look through like the Thizzler comments and shit, when they do post you, I feel like it can go both ways. I feel like people will either really fuck with you or they'll be on some negative shit. So what do you think? Why do you think that is like with you? Why do you think there is a negative aspect that people want to nitpick or what do you think? I mean, partially, I think sometimes it's because I have to prove myself still but then at the end of the day it's like bro the end and it's not a real place so who am i proving myself to like i genuinely from the bottom of my heart do my best not to read comments like whether they're positive or good because it's not a real place i appreciate the comments and when they're good like sometimes i'll look at them and like respond like i do my best to respond to the good ones sometimes i respond to the bad ones too but it's always positive stuff bro like it's just like bro it's just the internet my guy like it's like bro you can't you gotta have thick skin you know what i'm saying like and also, as far as people having good and bad, 
can't you say that about everybody? Don't everybody got haters? If that's not, you feel me? If you ain't got none, you're not doing something right. You feel me? You being, you being too much of a people pleaser. You know what I'm saying? Do you. And I think that's something that I've noticed about you. Like when I see your interactions online, oh. it's like even if somebody does say some hating shit, like you respond in a way that's very uh, proactive. Let's just say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. you could take it, you could take it two ways. You know what I'm saying? You could be awesome, man. Fuck them. Suck my dick. You know what I mean? You're just like, you know what, bro? Appreciate you for checking my shit out. Have a nice day. <laughs> All right, bro. It's just, it's, what else can you do? Like yeah, you said, bro. I think that's an important point that you said is like, the internet is not a fucking real place. I mean, it is because people, there's real people, but in the end of the day, they're not right there in front of you. Yeah, bro. It's not It's not worth the energy, bro. It's not. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, if you if you fuck with it, you fuck with it. If you don't, like, I don't know. My mama always told me, you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it. And I guess people just... Going like, bro, even if I have something bad to say about something, I don't say it because I feel like that's mean, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, when I see certain posts, I don't say nothing, bro. Don't say, don't be a dickhead. You feel me? Like, if you're going to say something, say something constructive, do your best. You feel me? I don't know. Nobody's going to listen to that, though. Niggas just going to hate anyway, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> that part. Um, let's add, let me ask you this then. So, when you go to the recording studio, what are your usual studio necessities? What gets you in the right mind state to, to make that Hemp Hero song? You know, it's probably surprise, what's going to surprise a lot of people. Because, like, I guess uh, if I put up a different type of... I mean, it's still me at the end of the day. But when I go to the studio, bro, I'm pretty much sober. I'll take, like, a dab or something. Like, mm. a good dab. Fat dab. So I'm <laughs> this, A good dab. <laughs> fat dab. Like, I love wax. Uh, but Or, like, I'll smoke a blood beforehand and... That's it, bro. Like, I don't like to get high until I'm done. Really, this if I'm recording. I don't like to be high off drugs while I'm recording, bro. I don't think I do my best while I'm recording. And I like to be of a clear mind. So, like, if I, like, if I'm high and I and I'm just like, oh yeah, this shit's fire, and then I go back sober and I'm like, this shit is ass. That's gonna piss me off. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna piss me off. So you I'm wasting like, time and money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mind you too, when I started making music, I bought my own studio. Like, I didn't go to a studio, so like, it was like, I had things like that happen. But it was like, okay, well, like, I'm glad I'm not paying nobody for the studio. It's like, it's my studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was my equipment. So it was like, uh, yeah, bro, like, I'm pretty much sober, bro. Like, I go in there with a the water. <laughs> I go in there with a, with a good water and I'm ready to start the sesh. Maybe some food if I'm hungry that day. I don't, I don't need much for the studio. Uh, shit, my engineer be sipping more juice in the studio than I do. I ain't gonna lie to you. She be getting down. I'll be like, yeah, girl, what you sipping on today? Like, what's the deal? What the fuck? Shout out broccoli. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> But let me ask you this though so as far as like this just brought up something in my head what really like was the first studio session for hemp hero like like what was that that made you go i'm gonna put words to the mic to the beat to the studio like you know what i mean well, well i mean okay you're talking professional studio or? just in general not like first song that you made that you can remember well Basically, bro, I always love writing, bro. Like, I'm a writer, bro. I love writing. Like, when I was a kid, I used to, like, make stories up for, like, my action figures and keep those stories for, like, a week or two. You know what I'm saying? Like, a real little kid keeping these stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, I don't know. I love writing. And then when I got older, like, I was always a good writer. Like, my teachers were always telling me, like, this is a good story or, like, this is a good... You feel me? Like, I was always good at writing. So, uh... At first, it started with short stories because, like, I was in, like, Puente as a kid. Like, uh, I was in the first Puente for middle school. We were the first ones ever. I think it was, like, us in one other middle school. So I was in Puente as, like, in middle school. And my teacher was, like, really. She was a great teacher. Shout out Miss Merch. I don't know if you ever see this, but if you do, you were an amazing teacher. I love you. You were great. Uh, my mama loves you still. Like, you feel me? Like, like you were a great teacher. Like, bro, it was, it was, a, it was a great environment to be uh, around as a kid for writing. So eventually that kind of turned into music. And then I got in trouble as a kid. And so I had to go stay with my mama for a bit because I wasn't staying with my mama at the time. But like, it was like, you feel me? I was still a minor. So it was like, you get in trouble, you go with your mom and you get out. So, um, or you're a guardian. And uh, so when I had that time, I had some cheese laying around. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna, you feel me? Like, I'm just staying over here. I was in a new place too. I was not in Hayward. I was over where my mama stays. I'm not gonna say where, but I was over there. And you feel me? Like, I had time, so I bought I bought my own studio set up. I bought a laptop. I bought everything I needed. I did the research too, so that way I know like what's a good product to buy, what's a bad product to buy. I bought myself the best standard standard starting microphone that I could find. You feel me? And then bought an interface, bought everything, bought bought the whole nine. How old were you at this time? I think I had just turned sixteen. Okay. Yeah, I was like sixteen, but um, 
I just had like I was doing good. You feel me? I was doing alright. So I, I bought a studio and well, I didn't buy a studio. You know what I mean? I bought the equipment and I just kept going from there. I made a song. The song is still on my laptop to this day. I don't know if I ever drop it because it's garbage. But uh, you feel me? Like I didn't. I was making music for like a year before I dropped it. Maybe two years. Like like bro. Like like. You were just stashing it? No, nah, I was just fucking around, really. Okay. And, like, at the time, too, I was, like, trying to learn how to be an engineer. That didn't really work out well because I kind of sucked at it. So, like, you feel me? Like, um, <laughs> What mic were you on? Do you remember? Was it yeah, like it, was, it was an AT, uh, either 4040 40 or 2020. I forget which one. I believe they're both. They're, no, I'm sorry. Somebody. No, I mean, I'm single. Blood so, down. Hey, so Blood I'm, down. I'm single. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> fucking, um, yeah, it was like an AT. I think it was an AT twenty twenty, bro. So it was like, I started with that mic, and then I got a Scarlett Focusrite interface, which I still have. Uh, I still have the AT twenty twenty two. You're gonna see it in a new music video for a song called twenty twenty four. That's the very first mic I ever started with. Still Dope. have it. Um, and yeah, and then I, I did upgrade eventually, but I was rocking with that one for a while, and then I sold the one that I upgraded with because I started going to regular studios. So do you remember though, like how you felt when you made that first song? Was it like a was it like a mo like an aha moment or was it fuck it? Look, bro, I said it was trash earlier. <laughs> it wasn't total trash. It it was a good song, uh what's the word? Uh, objectively, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I mean it was In like retrospect. Yeah, like it had a chorus, it had a verse. You know what I'm saying? Like it was good structurally. It was like like I said, I'm a good writer. <laughs> but uh it was just it wasn't you know what I'm saying? So here's the thing, too. What makes a good Hemphill song is like, bro, I got to have something to say. And, you know, like, that 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 took me a while to get, like, what what do I have to say? Like, what, what am I going to say in my music? Like, what is what is what am I trying to put out there? You know what I'm saying? Like, and so, like, I feel like for a while, I was just kind of, like, finding, like, I guess my my voice, like, what, what I wanted to do. And eventually, like, yeah, it became good enough to me to where I was like, all right, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to put this out there. Let's see what people think. And I think the first song that I dropped, I think it was, uh, I want to say it was, oh, no, 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 no. I dropped the EP hell a long ago. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the Full project. Yeah. It was a Purple Weather EP with me and my, my older brother. And it was like a lot of like singing and stuff and a little bit of rapping, but mainly singing. And it was like a cool, like almost like a, like a, I don't even know how to explain those type of those type of songs. They were just like it was more of a vibe. You feel me? It wasn't like rapping fully yet. Mm -hmm. And then like we started fucking around more, and like you know, then we started like making more like I don't know. It just it just grew. Like we grew naturally, and like just, just kind of be, I became more comfortable with it. And like I said, people go different paths. So like it kind of just became me at that point. Like it wasn't really like like as much uh, collaborations with my partners as it, as it used to be. Like it was just a story just for me. Like I just kept going. I was like, I like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the way it makes me feel. I like how I can vent and like just talk about things I don't talk about with nobody else for real. Like, that part. Yeah. For sure. Well shit, what's uh what's next for Hemp Hero? What's the what's on the what's on the future horizon? Everything. <laughs> is that is that a valid answer, bro? I don't know. I just wanna I just want to keep going and like if it uh, if it goes somewhere that would be so fire like I'll be so grateful and just just like you know I, at the end of the day I'm just keep making stuff that I like and I hope that other people like it and I hope that it's good enough for people to listen to um, this last year I had somebody send me the very first time that I was somebody's top Spotify listen to mm. shout out my brother it was it was one of my best friends from being a kid Josiah He's in the military now, but I guess he listens to me a lot. And that's that, that shit blew my mind. I was like, damn, I love you, bro. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's big. Yeah. I was like, wow, he literally, like, he'd be tuning in. <laughs> that means you're making, you know, an impact on people. Well, shit, Hampiro, I really appreciate you sliding. For Glad sure, we can sure. make this shit happen. For sure, for sure. Make sure everybody goes into the description and follows my boy, Hampiro. Thank you. This has been a great interview. Definitely appreciate you, dog. Instagram at who's Hampiro. Because who is Hemphiro, bro? But y'all going to find out after watching this interview a little bit more about me. I appreciate you, Nobi. Shooting like Ginobili. We out you. Yee!